I just learned something new that I'm gonna go ahead and try for the time being. I don't know how much success I'll see since our poor squash have already been hit by the borers, but someone online said they make a spray and they use peppermint oil, um, peppermint essential oil and witch hazel. Um, I don't have witch hazel and I don't know if that makes a difference, but what I do have is my peppermint essential oil on my Young Living Rep. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a few drops of this in and around my squash. The idea is that this throws off the pheromones of the squash borer moth and they can't find your squash as easily. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. The person who posted it said they did it last year and had great success with it. So at the very least, I can put a few drops of this around the garden and see what happens. So come along. It's very smelly. I mean, I think I'm just gonna do, well, if it ever comes out, I'm just gonna do some dots, you know, around each plant. I'm just doing it on the soil. I don't know that you wanna put this oil on your plants because it could burn them if the sun hits it. Today is a little bit overcast, so that shouldn't be a problem, but especially near the base, you know, if there's any chance that'll keep these critters away, they are awful. Now, if it rains, obviously we'll have to reapply. At the very least, my garden is gonna smell delicious. Minty fresh. I've heard of using peppermint for all kinds of bugs and critters, ants, mice. So it makes sense. Um, I just didn't know that uh, boar moths could sense it. And that's pretty cool if they can. Because if this works, holy moly, I'll just start buying tons of peppermint oil and I will put it everywhere. <laughs> So far the squash is doing pretty good. I do have some yellowing leaves here and there. So, but because I, I didn't inject a bunch of these, even the little ones, I ended up doing some injections after that video because I think the next day they did end up um, in some of the stems of the little ones and the eggs were on them. So I did go ahead and inject some of these other plants, even though I said I didn't in the video came later. I just didn't film it. Okay, everybody got some of this around them. It smells very pepperminty out here. <laughs> Quick little tour of the squash. Got some coming in here. The cages to keep these fairly upright seems to be working. Um, this one I didn't and see how big and sprawled out it is. This is one also I think I've had to remove some of the leaves and I don't know if the borers are in there. So I don't know if that one's gonna make it but we did get a couple squash off of it already. So, you know, I have more. And then over here there's one. We've got some here. I haven't seen any zucchini yet. Still too early for that. I'm 
then uh, the cucumbers here on the trellis look awesome. Here's a little baby female flower there. That one's getting a little bit bigger. I did find one over here. Look at that guy. Here's my finger for comparison. So, oh, there's another one there. So these are doing really, really well. My trellis is still standing, so <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> this here was one of the suckers that I popped in the ground. You can see it's still alive. I put a cage on it. So that might turn into a nice, healthy tomato plant. That might be a little bit of a succession plant. The tomatoes doing pretty good. Um, I still have some wilting on a few, but since we did the copper fungicide, everybody looks pretty good. I do have this one branch down here on the ground that I think I'm probably going to clip try to root because it is sort of breaking right there. I've left it on the ground for now, but um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. And look at over here, I've got some nasturtiums are creeping along in here. I've got some lemon balm in here and some other little volunteer tomatoes that I've left for the time being. I don't know that they're all that healthy and they're very crowded right now, but I've left them as a you know, hey, they're there just in case I need to pull from them. <laughs> um, oh, look, 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 look. Finally, finally seeing some beans. These are the ones the deer sheared off. So that's good news. Okay. The other ones are looking a little yellow and I'm not sure what that's all about. So those might get a little dose of fish emulsion. This one also, <laughs> I don't know why only a few popped up. I'll probably just stick some more seeds in there. The dill, looking really good. Seems to be doing its job. I haven't really seen many of the squash bugs. So I think the only leaves I found were on that one big plant when I did the video, but otherwise doing pretty good. The uh, strawberries are hanging on, so just want them to start multiplying because the plan is that this whole bed is going to be a strawberry bed. I'm borrowing space from it for the squash or uh, zucchini there, but let's see how our peppers are doing. Oh, look, look, look. All of a sudden, pow! Pow! That's awesome. Candy cane peppers. These are either serranos or jalapenos. So, oh yeah, they liked that fish emulsion. They liked that a lot. <laughs> so, and obviously they've gotten fertilized. Oh, look, look, look. <gasps> ben, my friend Ben gave me this plant. All right, guys, this is a pimento pepper. If you remember from last year's videos, I planted pimento peppers two years in a row and they never did a gosh darn thing for me, never. They would die, they'd lose their leaves, they were just in rough, rough shape. Well, look at this. This year was definitely uh, the year for it, I guess. So whenever things don't work out, guys, try it again. Try altering the conditions a little. I've probably made sure these stayed uh, nice and, and fertilized, you know, after we had that yellowing issue. So I'm wondering now, that seems to be the thing this year is I've learned how how key fertilizing is and how key adding nitrogen in in increments um last year i didn't do that so i think that might be why the leaves started dying off they yellowed they did start getting some spotting as well which probably because the plant wasn't healthy enough to fight it off so i don't know that's super exciting super super exciting these are uh let's see these are all the way red so these are ready to pick that one has a little green on it yet. Yeah, I'll leave it. Let's check these here. I love the striping when they've got the striping on them. That one's ready. That one's got a little green on it still, so I'll leave it. Eggplant is flowering. There's another one on the other side over there. I don't know if you can see that purple flower there. So 
that's good news. My tomatoes aren't really turning too much yet. I've got this one here that I keep plucking these off about one at a time. <laughs> the pot of tomatoes, I have to get some copper fungicide for them still. There is still a bit of yellowing that keeps popping up on these quite a bit. These ones are worrying me more than anybody else. So these guys, I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna make it. I hope they will but the yellowing is, is really getting bad. Um, these are the hibiscus roselle. They're probably not that much bigger from before, but what is different is wah, wah, wah. My rhubarb is not happy. So I, I'm out here watering every day. I don't know if that's just too much for it. No idea. I've heard that rhubarb kind of struggles down here in the south. So if that doesn't make it, it may not be long for my yard. Um, more chives, and these are the black raspberries, which look great. And then, of course, the asparagus that we put in this year. These just look great. I make sure to water these twice a day. These are happy. I probably won't do anything else to these for a while because they've got a lot of nutrition on there with them couple bags of manure, lots of compost. So probably in the fall, maybe in the fall, they'll get another dose of fertilization. But for now, I just keep them watered and keep a close eye on them. More nasturtiums blooming. This makes me happy because last year, I think I planted them a little bit late and the sun kind of fried them. So this year, putting them on the sides of the gardens, they've been under a little bit of shade. Like right here, these are under the tomatoes. Uh, they also provide some uh, pest deterrent. They're supposed to keep some pests away. So those are doing good too. And it's exciting to see those. Basil, lots of basil. The purple basil is over here. And there's some on the end of this bed as well. So I got lots of basil. My friend makes the very best bruschetta dip, so I've told her that I've planted this all for her and we will be eating bruschetta dip all summer, I hope. I haven't updated on these in a while. This is nettles. <laughs> yes, I am that person that has planted nettles uh, because I didn't have it and when I bought some herbs, uh, someone gave it to me and I decided to plant it so I know exactly where it is so I can harvest it. I make tea out of it. Um, I haven't really used it like spinach. I know that you can. I haven't done that yet. But these are the sweet potatoes. So these are chugging along. They just got watered. You know, there's not really much to report other than they're doing well. So if you fell on my Facebook page, you probably saw that I have pink blueberries. I'm not going to take this off of here until I'm ready to pick them, but I think I might have picked them a tad early. I tasted one and it wasn't really all that sweet, so I think you're actually supposed to let it get dark like that one is there. So maybe in the next few days I'll pull these off and uh, show you guys that. But these are the blueberry bushes that I've been pulling those blueberries off of. See, there's some more in there. These you might remember if you've been following me for a while. These are those raspberries that I said, oh, they've never done anything. They've been in pots and they're supposed to be a potted raspberry and they've never grown. And last year I planted them and they didn't do anything. Well, this year, where is it? Now, meanwhile, they don't look great, but that's growth. These poor plants did get some shock. My lawn guy, when I first planted them, he mowed some of them down. So they had arms that were coming out and they got, they got mowed. So, but the fact that I'm seeing a little bit of fruit on those is exciting because I've had those for over five years and never seen fruit. So I just hope moving forward, it looks better than that there. <laughs> Cause if they continue to look like that, they're just gonna get dug up. And if you'd like to see where I picked the uh, blackberries. And that is actually in this mess here. <laughs> um, here they are. Here they are. Hold on. It's 
sorry <laughs> spider webs so this is where I have been coming and picking these I found out from uh, watching my favorite roots and refuge that you don't really pick them until they start to look a little bit dull and that helps them from not being so bitter so that was really really good to know they've been uh, they've been good to put in yogurt you don't get a lot they are still a little bit bitter because they're wild but I'm just happy for food <laughs> I like growing food so that is it for today hope you enjoyed that little mini garden tour and uh I hope that our peppermint works. It may, it may not, but it's worth a try. That's uh, part of gardening is uh, doing a few experiments and uh, seeing what works, what doesn't, and what we can learn along the way. So that one's gonna be a new one for me. But um, anyway, I hope everyone has a great 4th of July weekend. I don't know how much I'll be able to get out into the garden, how much I'll be filming. Uh, it's just gonna depend. I'm not doing any plans because I've got some friends that I'll probably see, but I hope everyone has a fun and safe 4th of July. Talk to you soon.